What's up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to be showing you 20 of my favourite apps for students. These should be really useful if you're at university, if you're at school, if you're at college, whatever you call it from wherever you're from. These apps will help you in your studies, help you to organise your life and generally get stuff done. So sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy. First up we have Evernote and this is my favourite note taking app of all time. I love the fact that you organise everything into notebooks, it's a really easy way of doing stuff once you get used to the user interface. So for example you can see here I've got stacks of notebooks, so if I go into YouTube stack I can click that and you can see I've got three different notebooks within that stack. Then if I go into the YouTube notebook you can see I have a bunch of different notes that I've created um, with video ideas. If you get Evernote Plus, you can sync these to be available offline all the time. If you hit the little green button at the bottom here, you get options to add different types of notes. So you've got camera notes, attachments, audio recordings, reminders, handwriting, and full text notes. There's also a really nice widget. I have it in a swap bar at the top here. So wherever I am, I can always very quickly create a new note in Evernote. If you want to, you can also organize everything by tag. I tend not to do this, I just use the notebooks to organize everything, but if you want to sort of break everything down slightly more detailed, you can go ahead and use tags. Another cool thing with Evernote is the Evernote Web Clipper. This lets you share stuff straight from web pages to Evernote. So for example here, you can see a web page that I've clipped and it reformats it to display really nicely on a mobile screen. If you want to use this to work with other people, there's a really nice share function which allows you to share notes kind of within a chat so you can share stuff and then add comments as well. Next up we have Google Keep and although I use Evernote for most of my big projects, I do still use Google Keep to note down very small ideas. You can organize stuff by labels and you can also organize notes by color. The main reason I love this is that it syncs to Google Drive, so this means everything that you put into Google Keep is automatically going to be there on your laptop, on any other device that is signed into your Google account. It also means these are never going to go away, you can just save stuff to Google Keep and know that it's going to be safe in the cloud. As well as making ordinary notes, you can make lists. These are tickable, so you can use them for shopping lists and to-do lists. It means that you can really use Google Keep for whatever you want and you can also add audio files and photos. Next up we have Pocket, and I actually don't use Pocket as much as I used to because I'm using Evernote so much, but I know a lot of people love this app so I thought I would include it. This is a really easy way to save different web pages and content online to be read later in one really easy streamlined app. It reformats web pages to look great on a mobile display. Combining this with Evernote and Google Keep, you have three very very powerful apps which will allow you to save data from anywhere and access it pretty much anywhere as well. Next on this list we have AnyDo, and one of the hardest things to do as a student is stay organised. The interface is a little bit strange to learn, but once you've got the hang of it, it's a really nice way of organising everything. Everything is organised into these lists. Then within each of these lists you make tasks. You can easily swipe on a task to get rid of it. And within each of these tasks you can also add subtasks, so it's a really powerful way of itemising everything that needs to be done and just seeing it on your phone and then getting it done. You can also share tasks, so if a bunch of you are working on a project you can share it all together and you can see in real time how everyone is doing. Next up we have Cam Scanner, and this is a really powerful app which will turn your phone into a mini portable scanner. This works best for plain text on a white background, so you scan an image in using your camera. This will then flatten the image and increase the contrast, so it makes all those grainy photos you've got of textbooks and printed handouts and things like that a little bit more legible. It will then also let you save them as a PDF and let you share them with your friends. Another really powerful feature it has is OCR Recognize. This pulls the text out of anything that you've scanned and makes it searchable within the app. If you do need an app to turn paper into documents, then Cam Scanner is definitely one for you. Next up we have My Gender, which is specifically designed for people who take different classes. You can put in the name of your class along with the times when it recurs, and this can change depending on the days of the week. So you can set classes to go on different cycles. So for example, if you always have English on a Monday and a Tuesday, you can set this to cycle and it will know every single week. You can also set the room that you're in so you don't get lost as well as putting in your teacher's name. This then lets you track all the information you need to know about that class. You can add photos and audio notes as well as written notes. You can also add checkboxes so if you've got an exam or homework or some other task that you need to achieve you can really easily add that with one click and put in all the details here when it is due, who it is for and what you need to do. The audio note integration in this is really good, it means if you've got a lecturer who's about to tell you what you need to do for your assignment, you can just turn it on, you can listen to the whole lecturer saying it and you've got that saved right on your phone. Next up we have RefMe and this is a really easy way of sorting all of your citations if you're writing a dissertation or a thesis. The way this works is that you scan the barcode of the book and this will pull out all of the details for you. 
The app itself contains all the different styles like Harvard and Chicago and over 7,500 other recognized citation formats. This means if you are writing a dissertation, you don't need to bother with all the long-winded, um, putting the space in the right place and getting the commas and the full stops and everything when you're talking about your authors and your sources. This will just do all of that for you. You can easily sort all of your citations into projects, so everything you need is organized and there, right where you need it. Next up we have Photo Math, and this will allow you to take photos of an equation and it will solve it for you. This is really, really powerful. I wish I had this when I'd done my maths GCSE, but you can use this to solve things like quadratic equations and all that good mathsy stuff. You might be able to tell I'm not really a maths guy. There's two different ways to input equations. You can either take a photo of something on paper or you can go ahead and write it in yourself. But this is a really easy way to speed up doing your homework. Next up, we have everybody's favorite app for learning languages, which is Duolingo. This is especially great if you just need to brush up on vocabulary. One of the best features of Duolingo is the fact that it will read everything out for you. Not only does this mean it draws your vocabulary, but it means that you get much better at listening and understanding the language that you're trying to learn. And there are also exercises which will force you to actually try to pronounce them as well. Le garçon est grand. Bollocks. The interface is really, really pleasing, and you can also use this online as well. Next up we have Sketch, and this is a really great app for anyone who does anything slightly more creative or if you do engineering or anything like that. This allows you to create sketches on your phone which you can then share with people. I, for example, do set design, so I recently designed a set which consisted of a huge stack of microwaves along with a little microwave here, um, a table and some blinds but I could do a lot of the preliminary sketching on my phone. One of the things I like to do is take a photo of a um, hand-drawn drawing and then you can sketch over it using the app. It has a bunch of different tools and these are all fairly customizable. There's also some stickers which are slightly less serious but quite good fun. Next up we have Google Photos and this is by far my favorite photo backup app. This will back up everything you take, photos and videos alike. You can set it to only do it over Wi-Fi so you don't hammer any of your mobile data. You can then use this little option here to free up space. This will remove the items that are both synced to the cloud and saved to your device. So all your stuff will still be safe and in the cloud but it won't be clogging up your phone. The other really cool thing this lets you do is search within all of your photos. You can search for items in the photos, you can search for colors, you can search for places. So for example, I can type in dogs and this will pull up all of my photos of dogs and videos as well, which is pretty cool. Next up, we have your bank's mobile app. Obviously, this is gonna change depending on which bank you're on and I'm not actually gonna sign into this because I think it's probably a bit of a security risk. But banking apps are really, really useful if you are going into college, if you're going to university, it allows you to send money to other people. You can set up recurring bills and things like that for houses. And it means you can actually check your balance on the go really quickly. Money is one of the big issues of becoming a student. You've got a student loan. It's the first time you've sort of been away from home and you're buying everything yourself. And having your mobile banking app on your phone is gonna be really, really useful. Next up, we have the Student Cookbook, and this is a recent find of mine, and it's just a recipe app, but it's geared towards students, so everything in it is very easy to do, and everything generally uses cheap ingredients. It will give you everything you'd expect, like estimated cooking times, lists of ingredients, how many people the meal is going to serve. The really cool thing about this app is that it has this thing called Cook Mode. This basically takes you through step-by-step step everything you need to do and simplifies the user interface. So you can just put this on the side where you're cooking and you literally just go through step-by-step. Step. It will give you details of what you need to do. And then it also has a built-in timer as well. Next on this list is Headspace. This is a secular meditation app. It's really useful if you need to calm down. If you get this into your daily routine, it will really help you sort of put everything into perspective I never thought I'd be into anything like meditation, but having used it last year during my exams, I have to say it's actually really, really useful for just getting some headspace if everything is getting a little bit overwhelming. There is a free version which teaches you the fundamentals and the basics of meditation. And then if you get the paid version, there are a bunch of different packs. So you can focus on things like health or relationships. You can focus on patience, creativity, and things like that. Next up, we have seven minute. Now, as a student, quite often, you're not gonna have the amount of time that you want to go to the gym, or maybe you don't have the money to spend to go to the gym. Seven minute is a really easy way to get a workout routine set up just using your phone. In the free version, you've got a classic seven minute workout, which is predominantly cardio, but there's some push-ups and stuff in there as well. And there is also this thing called the 30 day challenge. The app will track all of your usage so you can see how much you've been working out over the months. And if you pay for the premium version, there are some other packages to unlock as well. Next up, we have Native Clipboard, and this just adds a whole bunch of extra functionality to the clipboard on your phone. 
This clipboard is then accessible when you're typing. All you need to do is double tap on an empty space and it'll pop up down the bottom. You can go ahead and tap on any of these and it'll insert it into your document for you. You can also long press on these and then you've got options to edit them and then you can also pin them so they'll be constantly saved and you won't accidentally delete them from this clipboard. If you're doing stuff like writing on your phone, this is really useful. It means if you copy something to your clipboard and then accidentally copy something else, you're not gonna delete the original you've got it here exactly where you need it to be. Next up is Monospace, and this is a really, really simple writing application. I tend to use this for doing creative writing more than anything else. However, you can see here, I've also been doing some blog post type of things as well. You've got two different themes. You've got a light on dark and a dark on light. The thing that is beautiful about this is it completely simplifies everything down to just the bare bones. You can organize everything with hashtags to make it easily searchable and easy to find. And if you select the text, you get an option for all your different formats. If you are looking for a simple, lightweight writing app, then Monospace is a really, really good option. Next up, we have Google Allo, and this actually isn't going to be for the social aspect and using it as a messenger service. This is the power that you get with Google Assistant. If you are doing any sort of assignment and you need to get information quickly, Google Assistant is kind of like Google Now, but I think slightly more powerful. Not only can you search for stuff and it will understand you and give you relevant information back, but you get all of this saved in your feed. And if you are using it for research or something like that, you've got all of your research right there in one sort of search pane that you can easily copy down into Evernote or whatever you want to do with it. Next on this list we have Pocket Casts and this is great for either entertainment or learning. I subscribe to a bunch of different podcasts and really the power of this app is going to depend on how many you're subscribed to. I have a couple that I used to use for literature stuff, so there's a Bardcast one which just talks about Shakespeare, or there's sort of the history of literature. This means if you're walking to class, if you're just going for a wander anyway, or going for a jog, you can have all of your podcasts with you at all times. You can download any podcast you like to listen to offline. If you want to listen to podcasts before you go to bed, you can set it to automatically fall asleep after a certain amount of time. There's also these two options here, which lets you skip back by 10 seconds or skip forward by 30 seconds. This is really useful for skipping over adverts and stuff like that in podcasts. It also has this option here called Volume Boost, and I found this really useful if you're using cheaper headphones and you're listening to not as well recorded podcasts. This is a really easy way to make them actually much easier to listen to. Next up, we have Alarmy, and this is my current favorite alarms app for Android. The really cool thing about this is you can choose different turn off methods. So you can make it so you have to take a pre-recorded picture. So for example, I have to walk into my bathroom and take a photo of the sink. You can also make it so you have to shake it a couple of times to turn the phone off. You have to answer a math problem or you have to scan a QR code. Now I'm gonna be doing a video in the near future on different uses for QR codes and this is definitely one of the best. This means if you have important classes in the morning or you're just not a morning person, then you can force yourself to actually get out of bed and get stuff done. And then finally on this list we have AirDroid 3. This is a really easy way of getting files from your phone to your laptop wirelessly. This is obviously really useful for things like photos and documents. It will also mirror all of your notifications to your laptop. So if you are working in the library or something and your phone is in your bag, or if you're in a lecture and your phone is in your pocket, you can respond to all of your notifications on your laptop. The other cool thing that this does is allow you to completely mirror your phone's screen. Now this is not yet perfect, it's still kind of in beta, but this will let you put your phone's home screen on your laptop and control it with your mouse. So there you are guys, I hope you enjoyed that list. Those are my favourite student apps of 2016. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other apps you would recommend for studying, for student life, for anything generally, any useful apps that you use every day. Please go ahead and like this video if you've enjoyed it, you can subscribe if you haven't already. Please do follow me on all my social media whatnots with the links in the description. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.